Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of three Globora Amphora individuals in Poland. Uh, they are RISE1246, which I named Stacy, RISE1241, which I named Richard, and RISE1248, which I named Angelica. Let's begin with the video. This is what Stacy is predicted to look like. She's got hazel color eyes, snub-shaped nose and blonde hair. Uh, when it comes to eye shape prediction, the eye shape prediction would, was done with 9 SNPs, so it's maybe not the most reliable. And when it comes to eye shape, she's got South Asian eye shape. When it comes to hair shape prediction, this was done with only 4 SNPs, so it's not a very high quality file, not a very high quality prediction, but with the 4 SNP prediction is that she's got kinky hair texture, which is why in the image I depicted her with um, very curly hair. She has BH1 and BH2, and she does not have BH3. Four, uh, her status for BH3 blue eye haplotype three is undetermined. Um, she's got some genotypes for darker traits. For example, if you look at her genotype in SLC 45A2, uh, this is mainly the big contributor. This is the reason she's predicted actually to have hazel eyes instead of blue, despite having BH2 and BH1. Uh, and if you look at her genotypes in Ketal G, SLC 24A5, ASIP and TIRP1 genes, she's definitely got white skin and lighter traits. Now we're moving on to Richard. He's actually the darkest individual of the three. He's got hazel color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and brown hair. Uh, when it comes to his eye shape, the eye shape prediction for him is that he has Estonian eye shape, so European facial morphology that was done with 15 SNPs, a little bit higher quality than the previous individual, and he's predicted to have wavy hair texture. This was done with 11 SNPs, which is one, like, once again a big upgrade from 4 SNPs. That was the prediction for Stacy. Uh, he's most likely heterozygous for BH1 and BH2, uh, but he's not genotyped for the main variation in BH2 that um, YSEC looks for. That's why YSEC depicted, depicted him with sunglasses, and YSEC also made him blonde, which is probably not the case in reality because he's heterozygous for BH2, probably not blonde. Uh, and he's got some genotypes for white skin. If you look at his genotypes in the SLC24A5, ASIP, and SLC45A2 regions. Now we're moving on to Angelica. I actually forgot to write her name on the screen, but this is Angelica, uh, just so that you're aware. She's predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair and a snub-shaped nose. She has BH1 and BH2, no blue hepatotype 3 or 4. And if you look at her genotypes and SLC 45A2, IRF4, TIRP1, KETOG, SLC 24A5, and ASIP, she's definitely got lighter skin tone. Uh, she does not have any derived variants in MC1R, so probably not a redhead. And when it comes to her eye shape, the eye shape predictor gives out an Estonian eye shape for her. So uh, once again, European facial morphology, that was done with 13 SNPs. Uh, it's a pretty mediocre quality of a file. Like, for example, for you, if you have your commercial data, data file that you got from my heritage or ancestry or 24 and me, you're probably going to have like 30 SNPs in your result. So it's kind of a low quality result, but whatever. It's, it's, it's high quality compared to what Stacy had. And she's got straight hair, according to my hair ID tool. Uh, this was done with 10 SNPs. For the GD match portion of the video, we're going to look at Richard's results. Uh, they're all pretty similar, but Richard's file is the highest in quality, so I just figured Richard would be a better representative than the Stacy and um, Angelica. So this is what Richard scores with Eurogenes K13. Um, with the Oracle for Eurogenes K13, he's closest to Basques. There is no Basque category with the Oracle here, so Southwest French is kind of like a proxy for Basque. And for mixed mode Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of basically Southwest French plus Sardinian. So uh, really it's Basque plus Sardinian is what he's scoring uh, with the Oracle, Oracle here, a mixture of Basque and Sardinian. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLPK11 Modern. Um, as you can see, he's mostly scoring Neolithic and European hunter-gatherer components, but what is kind of a mystery is that he's scoring 6% EHG, which is meant to re represent Caucasus-specific drift. I'm not sure why he's scoring that, but that's not really affecting the Oracle results, because with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Greek, Neolithic, plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer. So a mixture, of, that's what he is, right? A mixture of uh, European Neolithic farmer and European hunter-gatherer. Uh, this is what Richard is scoring scoring with PanDNA LK10. Uh, once again, another little mystery is the 5% CHG here. I'm not sure what explains this. Uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Basques, followed by Spaniards from Southwest Spain and Sardinians. 
uh, also show up on the Oracle here. And with the mixed mode population Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of Basque plus Sardinian. Um, it's a pretty common, um, pretty common result actually for all of these um, global amphora individuals. This is what he scores with PanDNA LK12. Uh, interesting that here he's also scoring 3% Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture. Maybe it's just due to um, EHG admixture. It's due to Eastern hunter-gatherer affinities that were present in the hunter-gatherers he's mixed with. But um, with the Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of Basque plus Berber or Basque plus basically all kinds of Middle Eastern people. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. And there is 5.8% Ancestral North Eurasian in this result, uh, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it's it's less than what's typical for like Sardinians, even Sardinians today, but it's still kind of high, higher than what you would expect the European farmer plus European hunter-gatherer to score. Uh, with the Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of Sardinian plus Matala or Sardinian plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer, so a little bit more Northern than Sardinians, and that's actually why he's closest to Basques and not to Sardinians with some of these Oracles, I think with, G, um, with G25, I think he would be closest to Sardinians rather than Basques. I'm not sure, actually. Would he? Well, you can look it up. There's G25 for this sample on uh, Explore Your DNA. So you can look it up and you can check for yourself. I think he would be closest to Sardinians, though. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Very West Eurasian. Obviously very white. Um, very, you know, modern, modern white individual. Now we'll be taking a look at their uh, traits with my genome analyzer tool, which is on my website, and it's also on my GitHub. So let's um, go ahead and select. Who are we going to select? We are going to start with, I think, Stacy. Right, Stacy. It's going to prompt us to enter a name. We're going to enter ST for Stacy. She's got AA in Komtsvamet variation, which is a very stereotypically European genotype to have basically uh, warrior genotype, more dopamine accumulation in the brain, uh, less slower dopamine reuptake, less Compt enzyme activity. Uh, and she's got GG here in DRT2, which leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia, schizophrenia and less dopamine D2 receptors availability. So, okay, so not that bad. None of this is genotyped, unfortunately. Like, this is one of the more important variants, and she's not genotyped for this in MAOA, so I can't really say whether she's a warrior or a warrior in MAOA, but we do know for sure that she's a warrior in Compt. Um, she's got GG in this variation of OXTR, which means two variants for higher levels of empathy, not a sociopath. She's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes, does not have any of the hemochromatosis variants, okay, does not have hemochromatosis and no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE gene, so uh, doesn't have Alzheimer's. For myopia, um, two alleles for increased myopia risk, two alleles here which also increase the risk of myopia, and AA here which is the typical genotype for most humans. Most of you guys watching have AA, but some people have the G allele here which greatly reduces the risk of myopia, which is not the case for her. Uh, she's probably have, She probably does have myopia, uh, at least judging from her genotypes here. Um, she probably has a slightly higher odds of myopia. Does not have micropy, you know what that is. I'm not going to spell it out for you because um, YouTube and monetization, I can't really be saying these types of things. She's got GG here, which leads to seven, 8 points higher IQ than individuals with AA genotype, higher IQ, and better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Uh, she's got TT genotype here, which leads to lower odds of cannabis and use psychosis. And by the way, I'm pretty sure that this T allele in this variation of ACT1 is most common in Spanish people today. Spanish people have the highest frequency of the T allele in this variation of ACT1. And for lowest frequency, it's some kind of East Asians. But it's very interesting that Spanish people have the highest frequency of the allele that protects from cannabis-induced psychosis. It's kind of interesting. You can check that on um, database SNP, DBSNP. I think you can also check it in Alphabet, but that's a topic for another video. Um, let's check polygenic risk scores. For polygenic risk scores, she's got average odds of schizophrenia slightly above average odds of schizophrenia for northern europeans but below average odds of schizophrenia for sub-saharan africans so if she was um black she would be less likely than what's typical for black people to have um her her odds of schizophrenia is less than what's typical for black people but it's more than what's typical for white people let's put it this way uh, she's got much lower odds of diabetes and she's also got uh, pretty much low odds of Alzheimer's, doesn't have Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is not a rare disease. Something like 10% of elderly people have Alzheimer's, but um, you know, for her, it would be like a 6% chance rather than a 10% chance. So let's reset the scores, and now let's 
enter our second ind individual, which will be uh, it will be Richard. Richard is the guy. Richard is the guy with um, brown eyes or hazel eyes. Richard. So Richard has GG in Vala Metavation, meaning avoid your genotype. Uh, so less dopamine, re uh, less dopamine in the system, quicker dopamine reuptake, quicker breakdown of dopamine. Uh, GG here in no-go learner variation of DRD2, so does not have any no-go learner variants in DRD2. Uh, and he's got AA in TAC1. This is super interesting, right? So uh, AA genotype in TAC1 is a genotype you will see in every single monkey. Every single gorilla, uh, chimpanzee, orangutan is going to have AA in TAC1. Uh, for humans, it's kind of like unusual. It's pretty unusual to have AA genotype or even AG. It's kind of unusual. And it leads to a significantly decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. And there's a couple issues that come around, uh, come about with this, which is alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, and various other illnesses. And as I've said here, this is not a typical human genotype. So he also has AA in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated once again in a decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. So he's got at least two variants in DRD2, probably more, because they tend to come in packages, uh, probably more that greatly decrease the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites. Um, okay, so for lactose persistence, does not carry European lactose persistence, does, is not lactose persistent, or at least doesn't have the European alleles for it. Uh, for the empathy gene, this is not genotype, so we're, we're going to ignore that. Um, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes. But there's some genotypes here that lead to an increase in the risk of type 2 diabetes. So he might have type 2 diabetes. Now for hemochromatosis, he's actually CG here. Very interesting. So he has one copy of the H63D variant and likely does not have hemochromatosis, but he does carry the copy for hemochromatosis H63D variant in HFE's gene. Um, no risk levels for Alzheimer's in APOE. Um, and two alleles that protect from myopia. Okay, so he's got two alleles here that protect from myopia and AT genotype here, which means a slightly decreased risk of, risk of myopia. Most likely doesn't have myopia. For miscellaneous section, does not have micro P. Once, once again, does not have micro P. You know what that is. I'm not going to pronounce that for you. Uh, AA genotype here, which leads to seven, eight points. I keep pronouncing that as seven. I don't know why. Like something cranial. I don't know. Eight points lower IQ than individuals with GG genotype. So Slightly lower IQ, actually. That's interesting. But there's a couple of um, there's a couple of variations that influence IQ. Um, this is just one of the one of the variations I included from SNPedia. There's a couple more, so it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, CC here, which leads to better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. And we're gonna skip all that. Now let's go to oh look at that. He has, he's actually got CC here in Act One, which leads to greater odds of cannabis induced psychosis. Interesting. So I think the previous individual, I think Stacy, was protected from cannabis-induced psychosis. But this guy, Richard, is has got greater odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Now we're going to check for polygenic risk scores. And for polygenic risk scores, he's got significantly lower odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for Northern Europeans. Okay. Like five times less. So if the odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans is like 0.4%, for him it's like 0. 0.08%, right? And he's got very high odds of diabetes, very interesting, and he's got um, slightly lower odds than what's typical for Alzheimer's. So he's got super high odds for type 2 diabetes, which is kind of kind of interesting to see. Okay, we're going to reset the scores. And now we're going to look at our final individual, which is going to be Angelica. Yeah, I'm going to prompt us to enter a name. Gonna answer Angelica. Uh, so Angelica is she's not genotype for Kolmitz vomit variation, but she does have GG in MAOA, which leads to higher MAOA enzyme activity. What your genotype? Uh, less dopamine, quicker dopamine breakdown. Uh, she's got AA um, genotype in DRD2 spirofluorescein pro, so she's got less dopamine in her system, and she's also got less dopamine receptor availability, low dopamine D2 receptor availability, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, probably has like it, it's predisposed to stuff like ADHD, but she is protected from stuff like schizophrenia or bipolar just by looking at these genotypes here. Uh, she's got GG in TAC1, which is typical genotype for, for most humans uh, and leads to slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain uh, compared to the ALU, which is like 40% decrease in dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain availability. 
Now, for lactose persistence, she's got GG here, which means does not carry European lactose persistence allele. Um, for diabetes, she's not genotype for this one, which is the only one we really care about. For hemochromatosis, does not have any variance, risk variance. I'm just going to skim, skim by really quickly. Um, gen not genotype for these two, for Alzheimer's, that are the most important for Alzheimer's. We're going to skip that. Um, for miscellaneous section, no micro P, no micro P. Increased cranial size and 2% higher IQ, 8 points lower IQ than individuals with GG genotype, and two fat gene variants in FTOs, RS 99, 39, 609. Uh, now we're going to check out her polygenic risk scores. And she's got two times lower risk of schizophrenia than what's typical for Northern Europeans, so uh, like 0.2% odds of schizophrenia for her, and average odds of diabetes, and slightly below average odds of Alzheimer's. Whew, okay, I did this. I did this and I fit it all into 10 minutes. Pretty good. Feels good. Okay, so um, that's pretty much all there is to these individuals. Thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download all three genomes from link which is in the description and leave a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, goodbye.